hi guys welcome to my youtube channel cyber security ranger <clears throat> before i begin my video i will request you to please subscribe to the channel now in my previous video i have demonstrated how you can capture the http passwords for the websites which are not implementing ssl uh, using error cap uh, in today's video i'm going to demonstrate how we can capture the um, https or in other words the ssl passwords right so again we are going to use error cap today but we are going to use error cap in the text mode rather than in the gui mode <clears throat> uh, but before that you need to install the man in the middle proxy so you can use apt dash get install mit in proxy i already have it so you can see here it's already a newest version if you don't have it on your kali you can actually install it all right the next thing that we need to do is that we need to run error cap in the text mode with capital T. So with capital T basically means error cap is going to run in the text mode, not the GUI. Q means in the quiet mode. So if I remove Q, it will basically start showing all the data packets here in the terminal, which I really am not interested in. So I'm only interested in the, in the contents like the requests that are being made or username and password. So that's why we are using Q. Now hyphen capital M is for man in the middle attack, MITM. We are launching ARP poisoning attack on remote connections. So hyphen I is for the interface. Uh, in our case, in my case, it's ETH zero and most probably is going to be the same if you're running Kali. Hyphen capital S basically means that we are telling the error cap not to forge the SSL certificate. Now, what does it mean by forging the SSL certificate? Well, it means that if I remove this hyphen capital S, what EdgarCap is going to do is, is that it will try to create a fake certificate and then the victim or the target is going to be prompted into the browser that you need to accept this certificate. And obviously it's a fake certificate. So the browser will also give a warning that this certificate is not genuine so the user may accept it or may not accept it, right? It depends on the user. So we are trying to avoid that. We don't want to forge the certificate. Then you have the IP address of the gateway, which is in my case, 36.2. And then the IP address of the victim or the target, which is a Windows machine, 36.132. Now I have already demonstrated in couple of my videos, how you can actually scan the network and find out these IPs of the target and the gateway. But I'm going to quickly show you that. You can use Nmap for that. You can use Addercap itself for this purpose. You can use a tool called NetDiscover, which I usually use with hyphen R and then the network address. So this will basically scan all the IP addresses on the network and as you can see, 36.132 is my target. 36.2 is the gateway, right? Okay. So let's start the error cap. Now, error cap has started the ARP poisoning. Probably it has already poisoned the cache of the victim. As you can see here, ARP poisoning victims 36.2 and 36.132. All right, so once... We are done in the error cap. Do not close this terminal because all the information that we need will be displayed here. So what you need to do is open a new terminal. And what we need to add here is uh, a rule in the IP tables. Now I will make another video on IP tables that how we can use IP tables. Um, but here, what we are trying to do in this rule is that any TCP traffic that is um, coming to port 80 should be redirected to port 8080. So now the reason why we are redirecting the port 80 traffic to port 8080 is because on port 8080, we will have our proxy and SSL strip script running. So when the traffic comes, the it will basically be stripped off and... Uh, we can actually get the username and password. Okay. Another command that you may want to execute is echo one. And I have again used this command previously as well in my other cap. 
to change the value of IP underscore forward variable from zero because the default value value is zero. So you have to make it one and to make sure that the traffic, the IPv4 traffic is forwarded through the Kali, right? So I hope the scenario is now clear. Let me run the proxy as well. So uh, MITM dump hyphen S means the script. Now this script, you can find it on the GitHub SSL script.py. If you don't find it, I can put the link in my comment section, description, sorry. Hyphen N means that I'm running this proxy in the transparent mode. So now we know that, I mean, normally if you have to set the proxy, you have to go to the Internet Explorer or whatever you know browser you're using and go to the settings and change the proxy there, right? To forward the traffic through the proxy. But we are running it in the transparent mode, which basically means that the target or the victim will actually not know that his traffic is going through the proxy. So let's press enter. Now you can see here that the proxy server is uh, listening on port 8080. We have already added a rule to redirect all the traffic here to port 8080. So when the traffic is forwarded to port 8080, the SSL strip is running, which is going to strip off the SSL protocol and hopefully we can get the password. Now let's, so we are almost ready now to see the outcome of this attack, right? So I have two windows here and where the proxy is running and here I have the error cap. Now let's go to the target machine. Now I'm going to use Internet Explorer for this demonstration and I will tell you why. It is not always a good news, so Let's just uh, go to Facebook login page. So let's click on login. As you can see that uh, the page is not fully loaded and it's understandable because I'm using Internet Explorer. It doesn't really, uh, you know, download all the contents. Plus the attack is also going on. So you cannot expect to have a fully functional, nice page. Now you also see here that the browser is also giving a warning that the newest experience of Facebook switched to the supported browser, et cetera. So, you know, it's quite likely that the Internet Explorer support has been stopped by the Facebook. However, we can still see the login uh, field, right? The username and the password. Now, if you can see on the screen, I don't know if you can, but on the top, you can see that in in this URL, HTTP is is there, but S is missing, which basically means that the SSL has been stripped off from this protocol. Let's go back to the victim, uh, sorry, the target, uh, the attacker machine. You can also see here that the, we can see the requests coming. So you don't see all the data packets. You are only seeing the HTTP requests that are coming. Uh, and what is the reply? 200 okay, right? Post, get. Now let's try to enter the username and password, but we haven't seen anything here because I did not enter the username and password. So I'm going to enter the username as a ranger, for example, and password as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let's press enter. Now, obviously when I press enter, it's not going to log in because it's not the real username and password, but let's go to the attacking machine. So now here, what you see is that I was able to capture the username Ranger and the password one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the page is facebook.com, the login page of Facebook, right? So as you can see that we have successfully stripped off the SSL. Now, remember that it's not always about attacks. You also have to think from the defense point of view that the SSL stripping attack uh, currently is being countered. So the Google, Facebook, and all the giant companies, I'm not sure about the smaller companies or other organizations. I don't think they're using, but most of the, uh, the giant organizations, uh, they have pretty good security against the SSL strip although we just launched on Facebook, but I will show you that actually if we use a, a better browser, uh, like for instance, if I use Firefox, for example, the, you know, the, the updated version of Firefox, if I use the updated version of Google Chrome, 
um, they actually prevent the SSL strip attack, right? So the Internet Explorer obviously has weaknesses um, due to which we were able to capture. So the same thing I'm going to do here. Um, so I'm going to go to the Facebook page and and we'll see if uh, it basically strips off the SSL or no. So as you can see already in the browser that it basically, the S is still there, right? It means that it did not um, did not remove or strip off the SSL. So the browsers, they also provide protections nowadays. So in fact, now Google and Facebook and, and they're using it, uh, it's a protocol called HSTS, I think, which is an additional layer of security on top of the SSL. So as you can see, it is not stripped off. So basically if I enter anything, it will not work. So if I enter my name, one, two, three, four, five. Um, if I go back here, you can see nothing is happening. So I'm not able to capture. So this attack, like I said, I mean, it will work uh, probably on Windows 10 as well if you're using Internet Explorer. However, if you're working with the um, with the latest browsers, updated, a fully patched system, the SSL strip probably won't work. So it's a good news from, as is from a user's perspective, right? Um, bad news for if somebody is thinking that you know we will use this attack against uh, you know some uh, target. So I hope you have liked the video. Uh, please do subscribe and like. Um, so that I keep on uploading interesting contents for you. So that's it for today. Uh, have a nice day.